on the origin of the world. Seeing that everybody, gods of the world and mankind, says that nothing existed prior to chaos, I, in distinction to them, shall demonstrate that they are all mistaken, because they are not acquainted with the origin of chaos, nor with its root. Here is the demonstration. How well it suits all men, on the subject of chaos, to say that it is a kind of darkness. But in fact it comes from a shadow, which has been called by the name darkness. And the shadow comes from a product that has existed since the beginning. It is, moreover, clear that it existed before chaos came into being, and that the latter is posterior to the first product. Let us therefore concern ourselves with the facts of the matter. And furthermore, with the first product, from which chaos was projected. And in this way the truth will be clearly demonstrated. After the natural structure of the immortal beings had completely developed out of the infinite, a likeness then emanated from Pistis faith. It is called Sophia Wisdom. It exercised volition and became a product resembling the primeval light. And immediately her will manifested itself as a likeness of heaven, having an unimaginable magnitude. It was between the immortal beings and those things that came into being after them, like, she Sophia functioned as a veil dividing mankind from the things above. Now the eternal realm of truth has no shadow outside it, for the limitless light is everywhere within it. But its exterior is shadow, which has been called by the name darkness. From it, there appeared a force, presiding over the darkness. And the forces that came into being subsequent to them called the shadow the limitless chaos. From it, every kind of divinity sprouted up, together with the entire place, so that also, shadow is posterior to the first product. It was in the abyss that a shadow appeared, deriving from the aforementioned pistis. Then shadow perceived there was something mightier than it, and felt envy. And when it had become pregnant of its own accord, suddenly it engendered jealousy. Since that day, the principle of jealousy amongst all the eternal realms and their worlds has been apparent. Now as for that jealousy, it was found to be an abortion without any spirit in it. Like a shadow, it came into existence in a vast watery substance. Then the bile that had come into being out of the shadow was thrown into a part of chaos. Since that day, a watery substance has been apparent. And what sank within it flowed away, being visible in chaos as with a woman giving birth to a child, all her superfluities flow out. Just so, matter came into being out of shadow, and was projected apart. And it did not depart from chaos. Rather, Matter was in chaos, being in a part of it. And when these things had come to pass, then Pistis came and appeared over the matter of chaos, which had been expelled like an aborted fetus, since there was no spirit in it. For all of it chaos was limitless darkness and bottomless water. Now when Pistis saw what had resulted from her defect, she became disturbed. And the disturbance appeared, as a fearful product. It rushed to her in the chaos. She turned to it and blew into its face in the abyss, which is below all the heavens. And when Pista Sophia desired to cause the thing that had no spirit to be formed into a likeness and to rule over matter and over all her forces, there appeared for the first time a ruler, out of the waters, lion-like in appearance, androgynous, having great authority within him, and ignorant of whence he had come into being. Now when Pista Sophia saw him moving about in the depth of the waters, she said to him, Child, pass through to here, whose equivalent is Yaldabaoth. Since that day, there appeared the principle of verbal expression, which reached the gods and the angels and mankind. And what came into being as a result of verbal expression, the gods and the angels and mankind finished. Now as for the ruler Yaldabaoth, he is ignorant of the force of Pistis he did not see her face, rather he saw in the water the likeness that spoke with him. And because of that voice, he called himself Yaldabaoth. But Ariel is what the perfect call him, for he was like a lion. Now when he had come to have authority over matter, Pista Sophia withdrew up to her light. When the ruler saw his magnitude, and it was only himself that he saw he saw nothing else, except for water and darkness, then he supposed that it was he alone who existed. His, was completed by verbal expression it appeared as a spirit moving to and fro upon the waters. And when that spirit appeared, the ruler set apart the watery substance. And what was dry was divided into another place. And from matter, he made for himself an abode, and he called it heaven. And from matter, the ruler made a footstool, 
and he called it Earth. Next, the ruler had a thought, consistent with his nature, and by means of verbal expression he created an androgen. He opened his mouth and cooed to him. When his eyes had been opened, he looked at his father, and he said to him, E. Then his father called him Ye O Yao. Next he created the second son. He cooed to him. And he opened his eyes and said to his father, A. His father called him Eloi. Next, he created the third son. He cooed to him. And he opened his eyes and said to his father, As. His father called him Astaphaos. These are the three sons of their father. Seven appeared in chaos, androgynous. They have their masculine names and their feminine names. The feminine name is Pranoia Forethought Sambathus, which is weak. And his son is called Yao. His feminine name is Lordship. Sabiath, his feminine name is Deity. Adonaios, his feminine name is Kingship. Eleos, his feminine name is Jealousy. Areos, his feminine name is Wealth. Anastaphaos, his feminine name is Sophia Wisdom. These are the seven forces of the seven heavens of chaos. And they were born androgynous, consistent with the immortal pattern that existed before them, according to the wish of Pista so that the likeness of what had existed since the beginning might reign to the end. You will find the effect of these names in the force of the male entities in the Archangelic Book of the Prophet Moses, and the names of the female entities in the first book of Naraya. Now the prime parent Yaldabaoth, since he possessed great authorities, created heavens for each of his offspring through verbal expression, created them beautiful, as dwelling places, and in each heaven he created great glories, seven times excellent. Thrones and mansions and temples, and also chariots and virgin spirits up to an invisible one and their glories, each one has these in his heaven. Mighty armies of gods and lords and angels and archangels, countless myriads, so that they might serve. The account of these matters you will find in a precise manner in the first account of Oraya. And they were completed from this heaven to as far up as the sixth heaven, namely that of Sophia. The heaven and his earth were destroyed by the troublemaker that was below them all and the six heavens shook violently. For the forces of chaos knew who it was that had destroyed the heaven that was below them. And when Pistis knew about the breakage resulting from the disturbance, she set forth her breath and bound him and cast him down into Tartaros. Since that day, the heaven, along with its earth, has consolidated itself through Sophia the daughter of Yaldabaoth, she who is below them all. Now when the heavens had consolidated themselves along with their forces and all their administration, the prime parent became insolent. And he was honored by all the army of angels. And all the gods and their angels gave blessing and honor to him. And for his part, he was delighted and continually boasted, saying to them, I have no need of anyone. He said, It is I who am God, and there is no other one that exists apart from me. And when he said this, he sent against all the immortal beings who give answer. And they laid it to his charge. Then when Pistis saw the impiety of the chief ruler, she was filled with anger. She was invisible. She said, You are mistaken, Samael, that is, blind God. There is an immortal man of light who has been in existence before you, and who will appear among your modelled forms. He will trample you to scorn, just as potter's clay is pounded. And you will descend to your mother, the abyss, along with those that belong to you. For at the consummation of your works, the entire defect that has become visible out of the truth will be abolished, and it will cease to be, and will be like what has never been. Saying this, Pistis revealed her likeness of her greatness in the waters. In so doing, she withdrew up to her light. Now when Sabioth, the son of Yaldabaoth, heard the voice of Pistis, he sang praises to her, and he condemned the father, at the word of Pistis. And he praised her because she had instructed them about the immortal man and his light. Then Pista Sophia stretched out her finger and poured upon him some light from her light, to be a condemnation of his father. Then when Sabioth was illumined, he received great authority against all the forces of chaos. Since that day he has been called Lord of the Forces. He hated his father, the darkness, and his mother, the abyss, and loathed his sister, the thought of the prime parent which moved to and fro upon the waters.